Welcome, everybody. So Google tells me that we're live, and we're just going to check on ISC if people can already see us. Excellent. So we have confirmation from IRC. Um, for those of you who are new and just joined in on ubuntuonair.com, you can uh, there's the chat widget below the video where you just uh, specify your favorite nickname and then you can join the conversation. You can ask questions and be involved. So welcome everybody to another weekly Ubuntu update. Today I'm joined by going from left to right. There's Kevin Gunn, who's going to give us an update on Unity 8 and Mill. There is Michael Hall, who's going to talk about core apps. There's Pat McGowan, who's going to talk about Ubuntu Touch. Thomas Strehl, who's going to provide an update about the Unity APIs. And I'm going to talk a bit about community and uh, what's happening in the Click and App Store world. And as I said, if you have any questions, um, keep them coming on IRC. Uh, you just write question in capital letters so it stands out and we can easily pick up the question. And then um, we're going to, to answer it towards the end of the session. So uh, Kevin, do you want to go first? Sure. So um, as I give my update, I sort of break it down into there's Unity 8 in general and then Mirror in general, and then I talk a little bit about sort of our two delivery threads or project threads, which are XMirror and then the Unity 8 on Mirror for Touch. Um, so for Unity 8 in general, we now have all of our indicators working on the updated latest backends, or at least they're waiting on the, a working backend. So those are all staged and ready. Um, we've added drag and drop reordering to the launcher, and we've added quick list to the launcher as well. Um, we had a few bugs pop up in our list view with page header implementation that um, we did ourselves, so we've gone back in and corrected some of those. Um, we've integrated the latest dash with uh, filtering back in, and um, we're putting some final touches on the UI portion of that. And then we've uh, added in category expansion into the dash, and then also support for app preview and click package installation. And as for Mir, we've um, landed our every bit of our multi-monitor um, support within Mir, and then this week we're focusing on the XMir integration part of that. And then Bypass is currently proposed as well, and we're just doing some testing to make sure before that goes in. Um, for XMir, um, we've got um, we're we're gonna Something that we're going to do this week is as soon as we feel good about our uh, XMIR multi-monitor experience, we're going to create uh, some sort of a call for testing, and there's going to be some details forthcoming on that. That's kind of the, the one thing that we're focused on this week. And then Unity 8 on Mirror, we've got uh, one particular bug. Um, if you're following us on the on the open channels, you'll you'll see us talking about it. Is um, for whatever reason, Mirror is not working on Nexus 4. Uh, we think it's due to um, some changes in maybe Android or the kernel, and that's something that we just, um, you know, we're spending a lot of time chasing and making sure that we solve that. And then um, we're putting some final touches around uh, uh, on-screen keyboard, um, revealing and hiding the on-screen keyboard within Unity 8 and Mirror. And as soon as we get those two things out of the way, we'll be able to land that as the default in touch. And I know I feel like I've been saying that every week for the last few weeks, but that is the goal, so... That's about it for me. Awesome. It sounds like we're getting closer and closer. Good work. Yeah. <laughs> Just get those so last few out of the way. The drag and drop and the reordering for the launcher, is that landed on the device images yet? 
That, well, it just went into trunk um, yesterday. So, yeah, it, should, it probably should be there in the daily build. Okay, right cool. Time to reflash again then. Yeah. Awesome. Not in this morning, but I bet it's coming this afternoon. Yeah, probably. Okay. Great. So, uh, Michael, do you want to go next? Tell sure. us a bit about call apps. All right. Well, we've had some updates to uh, the platform that have unblocked some of the core apps. I think Pat's going to cover some of this uh, a little bit later. But we have an alarm API now so that the clock app can store alarms and they'll go off when the clock app's not running. So you can use it to wake yourself up in the morning. Um, we've got cute location implementation, I think, just landed. So that can be used now by the clock and the weather to uh, identify your location. We have the media scanner finished, which the, the music app will use to pull in uh, album information and song information. And the music player work, I believe, has begun so that you can queue up songs to play in the background. <clears throat> uh, from the design side, we've got the new calendar visual designs that have become available, so the calendar team will be working on implementing those. Uh, we have some preliminary designs for the music app, uh, which has been kind of forking based off of community designs that were developed a month or so ago, but uh, we've got some updates from the design team on that. And we've got some changes to the weather app's visual designs that are going to be falling into place pretty soon. As far as the core apps, uh, the file manager has added a desktop convergence. Uh, if you haven't seen that, when you run the file manager app in the desktop now, you'll get a sidebar with your uh, bookmark places, just like you have in Nautilus. But when you run it on a, a phone, it'll be in a separate pop-up that you can access. So that's the first of the core apps that's really starting to add uh, convergence features into its design, and that's really nice to see. Uh, the calculator we're aiming to finish up this week because it's just about done already. It just needs a, a few bugs fixed and some polish, and it'll be done. Uh, the calendar is getting the new uh, Evolution Data Server backend, so that storing calendar events will use EDS just like it does on the desktop, and it'll be able to sync with uh, the date-time indicator so you can see your events on there. The RSS reader is continuing to make progress on the topic management and the grid views, so minor changes coming to that to make it a little bit easier to use. The music app, like I mentioned, has got uh, the new designs. It's got the new uh, media scanner API and a new plugin for that using Grillo, which is a, a GNOME framework. And we're adding autopilot tests still to everything and uh, running them all through continuous integration. Uh, we have three apps now that are being installed by default as click packages instead of Debian packages. So when you do a, a Fablet flash on your device, you'll get dropping letters, stock ticker, and Sudoku in the form of click packages. So we're testing those out, and pretty soon the rest of the core apps will follow in that. And of course, we still need more developers. So if anybody's interested in joining some of these projects, they're already pretty mature, so it's a good place for you to start if you're new to app development or app development on Ubuntu. Just give me a call or ping me in uh, Ubuntu hash app or Ubuntu hyphen app hyphen devel on Freenode IRC. And that's it for me. Perfect. So Pat, uh, can you tell us a bit about what's what's new in on Ubuntu Touch in general? Yeah, so let me do that. Uh, thanks. So um, I'll repeat a couple of things that uh, Kevin and Michael may have said, but uh, for the shell, the, the new scopes are in, so you'll see the category expansion. Um, the oh, he's breaking up. The are in, so there's all the, you know, the nice mini model uh, design. Yeah, you guys hear me OK? Right, let me, let me, uh, repeat it's better now. If you could just repeat the last sentence. You broke up a bit there. Yeah, I was talking about the scopes that are there with category expansion and the shell and the new indicators using the menu model uh, driving it from the back end. Um, for the applications, uh, there's been some improvements. You'll notice that the speakerphone now works in the phone app. Uh, in the browser, there's landing um, just yesterday, I think, 
a new uh, user agent string and a set of site-based overrides um, that we worked out in conjunction with the Mozilla guys and how they're approaching it for Firefox. Um, we'd like to evangelize a simpler uh, user agent string and get that working properly with, with various websites. But in the event it doesn't work properly, we have the ability to override it and provide something that does. Um, the address book has text and it has a new um, visual uh, design to it. And similarly, the, the dialer app and the uh, messaging app will be landing as soon as all the uh, dependencies are met. It'll, it'll go in this week. Um, and lastly, for apps, the um, autopilot test setup has been improved quite a bit, so we're no longer uh, seeing regressions in the uh, dashboard, and we're coming up green pretty much every day, so that's, that's good news. A lot of work went into that. Um, as far as the on-screen keyboard, um, it's it's now been refactored. It's the Ubuntu keyboard project. If you're looking for the, the code, um, that's what the name of the, the plugin is uh, right now. And the context-based uh, layout formats went in earlier, uh, late last week. So you'll see that if you're, for example, if you're browsing, um, you'll see a different keyboard layout. Um, the SDK, Michael mentioned a couple things that went in. Cute location for GPS data. Uh, the alarms API is in. Right now, you can set alarms and uh, get them managed, but there's it's, the back end service isn't complete, so you won't get your callbacks yet, but that's being worked on as we speak. And then the uh, BDS backend for the organizer. As far as the um, some other things in the platform, in the image, uh, Bluetooth is fully in the image. Um, it's usable from the command line, and the UI is yet to land, but that'll be coming in the next few weeks. But you can start to use Bluetooth, um, connect your devices with it. Uh, there, on the uh, media playback side, Jim got the GStreamer uh, video uh, hardware decode stuff hooked up. So he's just in the process of final integration on that, getting it landed into the image. Um, and that, that's the, uh, the new model that lets us take out audio from it. <clears throat> There's a lot of progress on um, on settings. They're starting to come alive in the image, uh, one by one, panel by panel. So you'll see a lot of the user interface in there, and then things will start to work, like the um, you know, setting the background and whatnot. Uh, one one interesting uh, piece of work that we're coordinating with some other uh, developers on is in the area of um, Ophono and the, the real modem support. We've got some conversations going to, for, um, between the Ubuntu folks and the Sailfish and WebOS folks, so there's some nice uh, coordination going on there, and there'll be a common GitHub project established to, to work on some of the missing features in that stack. Um, other work in progress, um, a lot of work on the service backend, so the content sharing hub, the music service, the download service, the alarm service we've talked about, all that stuff is in play, and, and over the next two weeks you should see that uh, get a lot more solid. Um, another um, important piece of work that's, that's going to land hopefully soon is there's some coordination in, in the startup events uh, between Android and Ubuntu. So right now the there's some timing issues there and it's a little fragile, but that's all going to get tightened up and very deterministic and that should land very soon. And I think that just about covers it. Wow, thanks a lot, Pat. That's a lot of a lot of updates, and it's great to see how everybody's working working together. Fantastic. And uh, now we have Thomas Strehl, who's going to talk about the Unity APIs. Yes. So two main topics here. It's one about the scopes and one about the indicators. So on the scope side, and that includes the media scanner, uh, we have now finally uh, made that public. So you have now a media scanner launchpad project where everybody can have a look at and hopefully can contribute. Um, we have that in archive if nothing went wrong the last two hours. Uh, we fixed there uh, basically all the known issues, uh, crash bugs and blocking things, what we have discovered over the last couple of weeks. So it's running fine on ARM as we can tell and this looks pretty good as we speak. There are still two open issues around the, the media scanner. Uh, one is basically that we figure out that it doesn't really support as such albums, 
So we need to add support for that. Uh, and we also need to add some form of storing or retrieving album art in the first place so that we can return nice images as well to the scope. That's currently ongoing work. Otherwise, there have been, I uh, think, on the scope side, a lot of fixes uh, when it comes to filtering. So we have uh, single select filters on the device uh, for the different results, etc. that's going on. Uh, we reviewed the operator customization, how we can do that. Uh, so enabling operators to add or remove scopes, etc. Um, we got the, the next iteration of designs uh, about the application scope, the home scope, the music scope. That's going to be under review, trying to iterate towards the final ones. That's ongoing as well. And uh, we removed now more or less all the mock stuff from the daily image. So everything what you see, most of that what you see, so 90%, is the real stuff now. Um, on the indicator side, uh, we got finally the real sound power and daytime indicator landing on the device. So what you see today on the image is the real stuff. Um, it's now converged, though so those three indicators are the same between the phone and the desktop. No more mock or demo code involved. Um, there are still a couple of issues like invoking the settings uh, on those indicators. That is where it will be started late in the week, so we need a framework infrastructure for, for doing that. That will finally use Upstart as well. Um, otherwise, we are hoping, or we are targeting, to get uh, the rest of the indicators in by end of the week. So Bluetooth location, messaging, that hopefully today or tomorrow, and network indicator uh, Thursday, Friday, as it currently looks like. It won't be fully feature complete then, as we're still missing some of the back, end, the real back, back, back end stuff, uh, like the airplane mode and designs about that. Uh, but that is just a small thing, and, and this doesn't really block us. Um, the the challenge on the network indicator side is more than getting it on the device in a smooth manner to not request too much. Um, there is now networking indicator code which is deeply in Unity, bound to the UI, etc. Um, and how it was basically made in the demo code was mashed up with the sound indicator and the chewy stuff, and to clean all that up without causing too much repressions, that is causing us headaches right now, but we will find a solution for that. So we're working on that as we speak. Um, yeah, that's the update. Great work. Thanks a lot. So I have a number of updates from folks who couldn't make it to the call today. So First of all, there's the Juju folks. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it, but they assured me that there's going to be a double update next week. So more uh, Juju action next Tuesday. I'm going to talk a bit about um, click packages and the App Store, because that's one project I was involved with. And on the server side, everything got deployed to production, and uh, loads of bugs were fixed. The team went through loads of iterations, and um, everybody started work uh, opening up the store, so we expect an announcement very, very soon. On the client side, the click package scope is integrated into the app scope now, and that's in the daily image now. And it also fetches data from the production servers. Um, the team is going to work on uh, bug fixes next, and uh, they're also having an eye on uh, working on a, on a functional prototype for the upgrader, so you can always have your, your apps up to date. And uh, the team is also going to work on integrating everything in the uh, Ubuntu online accounts. On the security end, the the security team was working on refining the Click App Armor hooks, and they're working uh, on a security review of everything so we can uh, get it into into main. And there's also some work going on to uh, to give us review scripts so the uploaded apps can go through automated review. And we've been working a lot on getting all the plans and uh, decision documents and everything on the on the Ubuntu wiki. So if you go to wiki.ubuntu dot com slash app store, you're going to find out what the goals of the team are, where we discuss things, where to find bug reports and all the rest of it. That should uh, should almost be be there 
like everything should almost be there on, on the wiki now. And we also worked on putting together a plan for what's going to happen in, in the next weeks. There's obviously UDS coming up next week, where a lot of the discussions are going to happen, but the the broad goals we um, were already listed on there and when everybody can can expect them. We also went through a test run through my apps, so we uploaded um, apps on there, tested it out, see what it what it feels like to to app developers, and we're working on on documentation, and that's one of the um, missing pieces until we until we can launch the apps. Well, the next update I have is from the community team who've been involved in a lot of the projects we already talked about. So um, a lot of work has been put into developer.ubuntu.com, which is the central hub of information for all kinds of development. So if you're interested in, in, in working on, on Juju or working on apps, you find all the information, everything you want to create for Ubuntu right there. And um, the team also worked on uh, getting the, the App Store opened and launched. There have been lots and lots and lots of apps written for the App Showdown, which is still going for another four or five weeks. Uh, if there's more questions about that, Michael can surely answer some of those later on. And the team was also busy working on um, the planning of UDS next week. Next up is an update from Sébastien Bachet, who's been working with the people uh, who provide the Ubuntu system settings. So on the battery panel, um, they implemented the, the graph for the charge using the, the history from uPower. Uh, they compute the last full charge information from the history. They get the better ID, battery ID from the device rather than using a fixed path. Um, the cellular panel, um, there the team refactored the Ophono wrappers. The backend is now mostly complete. It lists the available networks and lets you pick the one you want to connect to and it uh, displays real data mode information. And then there were loads of UI tweaks and bug, fi bug fixes. And that's, as far as I can see, the updates for this week. But I already had a look on IRC, and there have been loads and loads and loads of questions. So uh, let's go through them one by one. So there's the question of metallic origin. Um, any news about Ubuntu Edge? So um, those of you who've followed this, if you uh, go, go to the Ubuntu Edge on, on Indiegogo page, there's still around 40 hours left and still a few millions to go. So uh, make sure you tell all your friends about it if you haven't told them about it. But one thing I want to mention, if nobody else uh, from us wants, wants to talk about it a bit more, what I want to make clear is because I got the question a lot from from, uh, from friends of mine and, and people on the internet, they asked me like, what's going to happen if uh, the Ubuntu Edge is not going to get the green light if the funding isn't going to be there? So rest assured that Ubuntu Touch is still going to go on. Everybody is still hard at work, and uh, Canonical is still going to work with manufacturers and carriers on getting Ubuntu Touch out there in the world. So that's one thing that everybody should know. Anybody else wanted to say something about the Ubuntu Edge? It, just to reiterate that the Ubuntu Edge was not something that Ubuntu Touch needed to succeed. So Ubuntu Touch will keep going. You'll still get Ubuntu Touch phones. They just won't be as nice, at least for a couple <laughs> of years. Right, and all the updates you should j just easily get from the um, Indiegogo page. There's a tab called Updates, and um, everything's going to happen right there. And Stephen Fry says to uh, help make it succeed. Yeah. Yeah. That should yeah. be motivation enough. Absolutely. I like the guy. So there's a question of Josh015. Uh, can Pocket, formerly Read It Later, be supported in the Friends API? If so, what steps need to be taken? Does anyone know about this? I'm not familiar with the service, but as long as it's got relevant data and an API you can use, 
you can write uh, a friends plugin for it. And who would be a good person to talk to about this? Is this Ken? Uh, yeah, Ken probably would be the best. So yeah, if you uh, maybe go in the Ubuntu desktop ISC channel and find Ken Van Dyne, he can probably talk you through uh, adding a plugin for friends. So here's another question. Metallic Origin developer options in Ubuntu Edge. I'm not quite sure what that means. If you can maybe follow up on that. We're going to read out the question again. Uh, Cho Chef asks, I was wondering, will I be able in future when mobile Ubuntu S is ready to install on a capable device different than the Ubuntu phone, Samsung, HTC, or whichever device capable to run the OS? Yes, great question. Um, that's already possible. If you go to wiki.ubuntu.com slash touch slash devices, you get a list of devices uh, for which ports of Ubuntu Touch have been created. And um, there's also information on how to flash your device on there. Next question. Jason A. Myers. Are there any better instructions for app developers to get started on Ubuntu desktop apps than developer.ubuntu.com? There will be better documentation on developer.ubuntu.com. I'm working on that this week almost exclusively to try and get exactly. that clean. So okay. yes, there are better documentation and instructions coming. Cool. A question by Mandalore. Is there going to be a further support for laptops, uh, i.e. getting function keys to work? I can't install Ubuntu on my laptop because I can't turn my Wi-Fi with Ubuntu. Um, does anyone want, want to take that one? That sounds like a device-specific issue. I mean, all of my function keys work and my Wi-Fi works, and I know that's the case for most people. So this sounds like a device-specific bug that you should file on Launchpad. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes right. I so, would say, I would uh, say definitely you further install, support for laptops. You can install an additional driver that can uh, help improve that for certain models. So yeah, if either either on Launchpad, uh, go to answers.launchpad.net. There you can ask a, a question or ask Ubuntu.com. It's usually a good place to get started. Otherwise, find a bug report and somebody will look into it. But to, to address the more general point, yes, there's still active development on desktop and laptop support, and we'll keep working on those form factors as well as touch. Definitely. So another question by Josh015. Will indicators be written the same way as before, or will they start being written in QML? Maybe Thomas can answer that one. Sorry, can you come again? Uh, of course. Will indicators be written the same way as before, or will they start being written in QML? Um, to which component or, or which which part are you referring to? So there are different ones. So we have basically, you know, what we have in the shell, what you see, that's QML, but that is what no user would actually touch, ever touch. Then we have backends, what we write, and those are written in, can be written in any technology we use, mostly C, because they communicate over Dbus to the indicators. So is it then just the question related maybe more to, do we have something like an app indicator interface exposed in QML that application developers might be able to use? Is that maybe the question? I think, yeah, yeah that, it, it, or can we use existing Python ones, like we've got the Indiegogo campaign indicator that somebody Which is wrote. in the app indicator. So currently we, we don't have QML wrappers for that. But that is on the roadmap. But okay. not but you within can the next four weeks. You can continue using the C or the Python ones. Perfect. OK, here's a question by Superhans. Will the mobile browser eventually replace Firefox on the desktop? Anyone wants to take that one? can try that one. So I think um, perhaps in the, in the very long term, you know, when we go to convergence, there's probably two options. We will coexist two WebKit-based browsers, you know, depending on the form factor. Or I think there's a chance if the mobile browser can uh, be enhanced sufficiently, 
that it could it could possibly become a desktop capable browser, but I think that would be the long thing. Okay. A uh, question by Greeny25. When will we see Ubuntu Touch in newly released models, and will future versions of Touch see the desktop interface included depending on device specifications? Pat, maybe? Uh, there, yeah, the, I mean, the goal is to see devices enter the market next year. So all the work we're doing this year is in preparation for that, and we, we uh, intend to engage soon here to uh, to start preparing those products. So I think the answer is uh, it's next year. As far as the um, desktop interface included, um, and there's already work around the Ubuntu for Android solution, so that'll be nearer term, and then um, really end of next year in 2015 is probably the time frame after 14.10 for fully converged Ubuntu devices. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, here's a question by Metallic Origin. What if Ubuntu uses user info and sells them to third-party service providers? Okay, so Simply we have to... Yeah. We Sorry, don't. Go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. We had a very long discussion about how um, data in general is, is, is treated um, last cycle, uh, when, when, and you can still find the... Um, sorry, the English term escapes me right now, but... Uh, in the in the dash, you can find um, legal text, which should give you reassurance what what happens. Um, I wouldn't be as drastic as what Mendelaw said on IRC, which was stay off the conspiracy web pages. Then, but um, we we take this seriously. Like, there's no data being sold to anyone. You can also easily disable any of the search providers right from the dash. Exactly. If that's a on concern the to you. And also now on devices. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Def Joe asks: Will Ubuntu Touch be available on low-performance phones like HTC Desire C? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know if it's if the HTC Desire C is supported, but I know that somebody else worked on on some Desire port. So uh, maybe also just check out wiki ubuntu.com slash touch slash devices and find find out there. Okay, there's a repetition of another question. This is an interesting one. Skyline969 asked approximately how close is Ubuntu Touch to being usable as a daily driver on the Nexus 4? Do we have, do we have some experience in the room? I've been using it as my daily driver for about the last month and with a few features that I missed from my Android phone, it's been a perfectly usable daily driver. I mean, it's not feature complete. It doesn't have all of the apps that you can get for an Android phone, but as far as just using it as a daily driver, it, it's there already. Perfect. Um, here's another question by TMCC Land 47 <laughs> Will Chromium replace Firefox? And also, if it will, does it replace Firefox when you update? So um, Ubuntu has a long history of, of uh, exploring options and making sure that the user experience is, is the best we can make it. And it was currently decided like, just a few weeks ago that um, the default on the, on the desktop is going to stay Firefox. And what we never did was to replace apps when somebody updated. That's that's not not happening. So if you are happy with Firefox and you update, and at some stage it should be decided in a few years or in a few cycles to use Chromium, then you're still going to have your Firefox and you can still use it. Okay. Next question by Amp. In the video for the Ubuntu Edge software story, somewhere it says that the convergence for Ubuntu Edge will be faster than Nexus 4 because it is built into the hardware. What does built into the hardware mean? 
I think it just means that the hardware for the Ubuntu Edge is designed to run a desktop, and the hardware for the Nexus 4 is not. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Jason A. Myers asks, any chance of getting an Ubuntu One email service? I don't know any, any of any plans. Sorry. Probably but, not. What's that? I, I don't know of any plans right now for us to provide an email service. Yeah, same here. I don't know of any plans. Sorry. If you want uh, an email alias, you can get one by becoming an Ubuntu member. And then that's you can get your launchpad username at ubuntu.com. Yeah. And more information about that you can find at wiki.ubuntu.com slash membership. OK, another question from Grasshopper. Will Python 3 be fully supported? Will Python 2 packages still be included in the repositories? So I don't know for how long we've supported Python 3, but we've supported it for a very long time already. And uh, Python 2 packages are still included in the repositories. So um, yes. Um, I, do, I think we want to move to all Python 3, but until we have all of the Python 2 stuff upgraded, I know Barry Warsaw has been pushing to move everything to Python 3 for years now. And we're slowly making progress there. That's right. That's right. And I think that's it. Like, if you have questions, keep them coming. If I missed one, please, uh, please mention it again. And please make sure to use question in capital letters um, in front of your question. So I had a quick chat with uh, with Jono basically before he told me that he can't make it to the uh, to the weekly update, and we both said that probably next time we should have something to to demo again. I think that would be would be nice. Michael, do you have anything super interesting you could show off that's happening with the with the core apps right now? While we wait for the last questions to come in. Let's see if I can share my desktop. can show off the file manager's convergence, because that's pretty slick. Awesome. Let me wait for the Hangout to catch up. You see anything, or is if it all black? Need... Oh. It seems like it's all black, I'm afraid. That's weird. Let's see if I can share just an individual app, then. In the meantime, I can ask uh, answer a question from Spider623, which is, will Will we see SE Linux or AppArmor in the final Ubuntu Touch? Yes. So yeah. AppArmor definitely. Um, that's a strong part of our app confinement story. So AppArmor is deep, deeply hooked into everything you, we use on Ubuntu Touch, and um, all the apps are run under under confinement. Um, there will there's going to be a, some blog posts a bit. There's some more documentation. But basically, app developers they they get to decide which uh, security permissions their their apps are going to have, and App Armor is going to make sure that that's going to happen. As a Linux, I'm not a security person, so I can't speak to that. But App Armor definitely. Um, Michael, did you have any any luck? No, it doesn't look like it's going to let me screen share today. Okay, no worries. Okay, no worries. But if anyone wants to try it out, you can get the uh, file manager code uh, off of Launchpad and run it yourself. Awesome. And then if you just expand the window, 
from being a, a portrait phone size to landscape, you'll see it mm -hmm. slides out that little sidebar, which is really nice. Sweet. All right, we have two more questions. Let's go through them quickly, and then we can uh, wrap up. So Hami asks, hi, how is Ubuntu Edge different from a Linux distro on Android, speed, graphic, and usability-wise? I think take the it? difference is that it's going to be all Ubuntu underneath. Instead of having you know the Android user land tools and everything, it's all going to be what you get in a standard Ubuntu install. Okay. Uh, next question by Holker. Will there be Ubuntu on Kindles? So I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm. I I think um, Ubuntu Touch was ported to some of the Kindle devices. Again, go to wiki.ubuntu.com slash touch slash devices, and um, you're going to find out which, which devices exactly uh, this was ported to. Yeah, I think anything that has a Cyanogen mod port can potentially run Ubuntu Touch. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Perfect. All right, and I think I think that's it. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for your updates. Thanks a lot, everyone, for for your questions. And uh, we're going to meet up next week again. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye.